Hello again, this is Singyi from the Sanctum of the Soul and I am so excited today because this deck has finally arrived. I've had my eye out on this deck for about, you know, the better part of the year. But it has arrived and I couldn't help it, so I have opened the deck and unwrapped the, the cards. But I haven't had the time to um, look at more than maybe 10 cards, so... Yeah, this will be the first time I'm seeing most of these cards in person. But I have looked at the images from the Apple app, uh, where it was, right, it was released about maybe three months ago for free, for, you know, the trial period. So I do have an inkling of what some of the cards look like and what some of the cards are. But let's get to it. So I've got the Mystical Shaman Oracle out here uh, because of how similar some of the cards are as well as the card stock. Um, basically, I hope this is the new Hay House Generation, you know, card stock because I am a huge fan of it. Uh, but yeah, uh, and as you can see, Colette Baron Reed is a co-author of this deck. Uh, so there will be some similarities, but um, in general, this deck has a more earthy, darker kind of feel. So it feels more, you know, anchored in the real world or, you know, in the shamanic world. While this deck is more airy, fairy, kind of lovely, kind of playful energy. So I've got some of the cards out uh, just, you know, because I have seen some of the animal cards here and there are animal cards here as well. So I, I kind of want to do a comparison and see the similarities and the differences between the decks. So yeah. Um, the box is really nice. Uh, it's the first Hay House deck I know that has um, a magnetic lid. I mean, the um, Mystical Shaman Oracle has a magnetic one as well, but it is huge. So I do appreciate the compact kind of box. Uh, just simply because it's easier for me to carry around if I do want to do a reading for someone outside. So uh, we've got this wonderful color gradient here and it says the spirits residing in the natural world have much to share and the secret secrets of their forgotten language are now available to you. We'll see about that. <laughs> so um, there's this nice flap here which doesn't serve as, it, well it, it doesn't serve that good, great a purpose as you can see it doesn't really if you have the book in, it's not that easy to get out anyway. And um, as someone who is particularly protective of his cards, I prefer to just, you know, tilt it and get it out the old fashioned way so I don't damage the cards. But all in all, it's the small touches really. Um, I do appreciate the touch and such a beautiful interior like most of the time you get like a white or a plain colored interior so i do appreciate the effort and uh, yeah let's read the back of the box well the first sentence is basically the same yeah so there are 68 cards in this deck which is more than Mystical Shaman Oracle, if I am not wrong. So, uh, as you can see, the cuts are the same size and cut stock as the Mystical Shaman Oracle. Come to think of it, this to look about the same. So, yeah, probably like 64 cuts here, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> So yeah, and even the the back of the cards have a similar design. So I think that's like the medicine wheel in the deck, or the compass. I can't remember, but uh, probably the medicine wheel. And over here you have this nice sunburst Mandela design. 
which is lovely and there are 10 petals so I think it's the Anahata the heart chakra so anyway before we jump into the, the cards here's the guidebook and I must say like all of Colette Van Reed's other guidebooks it's quite sizable uh, and just like the um, all her other oracle decks, the format's, you know, exactly the same. You get the card, number, the name, and like a tagline, I guess. And the, yeah, the details. So, uh, unlike the Enchanted Map Oracle, um, these two decks, well, this one at least, doesn't seem to have the um, reverse meanings. So, um, well, it's not a big deal. Uh, there's a lot of Oracle decks don't offer that, but you can do it if you want. Since I am a big advocate of um, intuitive readings, but if you don't want to, it it doesn't really matter. Uh, so yeah, this is the cards talk of the Mr. Go Shaman Oracle, and. Yeah, you can see how similar they are. So anyway, let's get to the cards. Um, just put this aside. Right, so um, I have taken out some of the cards from the Mystical Shaman Oracle, as mentioned. Uh, basically the animal cards. Just in case I see any similarities, or uh, you know the same animal mentioned. So yeah, first card, the ant spirit. Time to collaborate. This is lovely. Look at the design here. Mm. And I like that there are puzzle pieces. So. All of us fit together into one big picture, so when you collaborate with other p pieces, you get um, an idea of the bigger picture. Yeah. Lovely. The antelope spirit. Life is speeding up. So it seems like this is going to be a common theme throughout. Um, I mean, I like it. Uh -huh. I like that it's subtle, like, you don't get an overpowering, you know, too busy a background, so you kind of let the animal, you know, stand out. And I love the colour gradients, um, every card seems to have that colour gradient, and it's, yeah, I love it. Uh, armadillo spirit set healthy boundaries and it seems like the animals are hmm maybe not this one uh, from the cards that I have seen um, a lot of the animals have these you know accessories and crowns and rings and well some of you might find that um, it's not realistic, uh, but I, I, you know, it's not a big deal to me. And I mean, this is supposed to be the spirit of the animal, and I guess it's the spirit as, you know, how we as human beings see them. So, you know, animals might all look similar to us, you know, all the individuals of a species, so this might differ differentiate them as you know the spirit or something i mean it's cute and i'm not sure what this is uh but it seems to be everywhere in different directions as well so maybe it's not a symbol and does it look like this one has the petal symbol so maybe that's not a recurring theme as well or maybe it's just in certain cards Batches, spirit. Just look at how rich the colors are. 
the reds and the greens is such an earthy kind of color and yeah look at that whoa the bat spirit also with a crown a rebirth is a short oh yeah what was that one be fearless and bold I'm not sure how bats symbolize rebirth, uh, maybe in certain cultures where, you know, it's supposed to be, you know, nocturnal and it flies, it's like the, 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 the birds of the night, I guess, that kind of finds its way through the darkness. Beaver spirit, oh, this is cute, and you see this, like, Native American kind of feathers. Oh. My gripe is that it looks more like a mouse than a beaver, apart from, you know, the flattened tail. Lay a solid foundation. To me, a better meaning would be, you know, maybe like a dam, but I guess foundation works. I like how the, the the colors in the background look a bit like the murky waters of the river and there's this slight flower motif in the back I think so that's lovely bee spirit and it seems like the moon is another common recurring theme um, you can see it in here and here so I'm not sure if it's supposed to be the moon so it doesn't really make sense for bees to be out at night uh, so it could be the sun you know I don't know it's not it doesn't look bright enough to be the sun but it could be and it's sweet results await. <laughs> I like this. Oh. oh, look at that. You see this little clockwork. So they're reliable and they work, yeah, you know, all the time. Bobcat spirit. Life is a mystery. Mm. Brown bear spirit. Now this is definitely you know, Native American kind of imagery. Um, actual Native Americans might disagree, but I know one of them might. But still, you know, to us uninitiated folk, this is fine. <laughs> Take time out. I'm going to have to look up um look up what the brown bear. Uh, symbolizes in native um, mythology and beliefs but it's probably you know, hibernation probably and I like how there's this bee like bear claw on the heart of the bear so it's you know actual spirit you know have that spirit in your heart oh um, yeah, that's a different one this time. Just lovely. Buffalo spirit. Again, slightly Native American. The abundant universe will provide. Butterfly spirit. Wow. Yeah, I think that's the last card that I've looked at. The butterfly spirit. This is lovely. I like these tendrils that kind of just highlight the natural, well not natural, but you know, the curves of the butterfly. This is lovely. Transformation is beautiful. This reminds me of um, the saying that um, you can't appreciate the butterfly without appreciating um, the caterpillar which 
I think a lot of people kind of overlook the fact that caterpillars have important um, ecological function as well and in fact a lot of caterpillars are really beautiful like the moth caterpillars might be more colorful than the moths themselves so yeah lovely canary spirit so i've got a budgie at home and <laughs> this kind of reminds me of it uh, but I love that it's standing on a flute uh, and it's you know, the musical stave stuff. Yeah. And here we have yet another Mandela kind of and here as well. Love the blue background, um, sim symbolic of expression. So you express yourself through your music, through your voice, and sing your own song. Cat spirit. I love that a cat has bird wings that look kind of like butterfly wings. But yeah, um, um, one gripe I have already is how often they use this, you know, what feather earring accessory kind of imagery. Um, I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, when used a lot, especially in terms of, you know, the cat spirit, it just seems a bit contrived. Uh, it could do without it. Uh, it's not a deal breaker for me, but yeah, seems like it's still um, hinge, you know, taking too much from the Native American kind of um, imagery and nowhere on the box does it actually say that this is supposed to be a you know native kind of deck uh it's not a big deal and it's probably the artist's preference but um i know some native americans would disagree with it either way though it is beautiful and it's adorable and if you look at this, the eyes are different colours. I can't remember off the top of my head what that's called. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can't remember. But it says, claim your independence. And I guess cats are quite free-spirited animals. Um, anyone who has had a cat could tell you that you know, they're quite independent. And they don't mind going out on their own, which might explain the freedom, you know, s symbolized by the wings. Still though, this is lovely. And you've got this crystal embedded here. So kind of, you know, true vision, clear seeing, I guess. Chameleon spirit act as if <laughs> love that um you can see the chameleons uh, changing colors to match the background of the card which is genius mm. you've also got um the same motif that you see um, on the first few cards and yeah this is nice and I think this, these are like reminiscent of reptilian wings as well. Cow spirit. Again with the feather. Uh, but I do like that um, we're using you know animals that are everyday. So you don't get anything too fanciful. And you know sometimes we overlook the animals around us like cows and cats. And you kind of treat them as because you see them all the time, and you kind of, you know, stop looking at them as having any kind of symbolic, uh, spiritual symbolism. So it's nice. And look at all of these grassland flowers. It's amazing. The miracles are endless. That's interesting. Oh, let me look that up and see how they justify that message. 
You are at a beautiful point in your life today. For your needs are being met effortlessly. Hmm. Now it's also the time when you will see many of your projects and commitments that were set in motion in the past begin to yield valuable gifts. It doesn't actually um, kind of say what the miracles are and what the cow has to do with it, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's because of the pastures and how fertile they are so as long as you tend to your pastures and i guess the cows have an important role in that as well you know like cow droppings and i guess that's what it means coyote spirit trust in divine detours so the coyote is supposed to be um, the trickster spirit um, in native mythology. So I guess that's what they mean by divine detours, because it looks like a detour, um, but it does have, you know, divine meaning to it, divine um, significance, and it's going to help in your personal growth. And oh, I love that. That looks more Celtic than native. So, I mean, I have mentioned um, that there, there does seem to be disproportionately, um, it does seem to be disproportionately native, but I do love the melt of cultures because, you know, in this globalized kind of world, we, cultures aren't as, you know, clearly defined as they used to be unless you're a traditionalist or a purist. So in, for a lot of us who just you know, do energy, spiritual work, um, we kind of do appreciate that, you know, because we're, we're drawing on all these different cultures and wisdom from everywhere around the world already. So this is lovely. The uh, crow spirit. So there is a crow spirit in um, this mystical oracle, mystical shaman oracle. Let me just find it. And there it is. Ah, okay. So this is the crow in the mystical shaman oracle. And I mean, you can see the, dis the, the similarities down to the moon at the back. The, um, this one says co-create with spirit, uh, which I find, well, it is, I guess you could interpret it that way, but to me, the crow is always the one that breaches between, you know, what we perceive and what it, what actually is out there. So it kind of keeps the secrets and it's yeah basically it shows you the secrets and I mean it's really similar to my understanding of what the raven symbolizes uh, and so I might be wrong in that but yeah to me um, they are similar and it doesn't really tell me to co-create the spirit in a way um, just because of my understanding of that symbolism uh, but again I could be wrong uh, I'm not the most learned person about native uh, you know animal totems and animal spirit mythology and beliefs so I could be wrong uh, you know why don't I look at the mystical shaman oracle and see what they say about the crow it's number 13 there we go. The crow is the keeper of universal law, the law of truth. Crow teaches us to walk our talk, to find congruence between who we say we are and who we really know ourselves to be. 
this winged one insists that we speak truth, that we create truth instead of searching for it. Right. Here's the book in case anyone thinks I'm pulling that out my ass. Uh, and that we bring truth to every situation we find ourselves in. Ah, right. So yeah, this one always has the idea of truth and so I don't really see the co-creative spirit. Um, it's not a big deal though. I mean, you could interpret it your way or you could interpret it their way. It doesn't really matter. Because, um, you know, like I've always been ad advocating, every deck works it, um, personally with us, so, yeah. As you look around, have you sensed the magic? Crow Spirit says you are right on target now to see your dreams magically. Yeah, yeah, I don't really see that. But it's okay. Uh, not a big deal. Right, uh, so I have found the other coyote card in the Mystical Shaman Oracle, and you can see how similar they are. Mm. They're both lovely, honestly. Can't decide which one I like better. I also love them both. <laughs> so anyway, moving on. Mm. I know I spend a lot of time talking about my disagreements with some of the card meanings, but I think, you know, for all of us who have been working a lot with cards, we come to a point where we kind of have our own interpretations and our own, you know, ways of looking at cards. And a lot of the times they differ from the creators of the cards. But um, as much as you know, it's useful to have your own interpretations. It is also useful to look at the cards, um, the, the meanings uh, that ascribed to the cards by the creators, and you kind of learn something new, because we also tend to be stuck in our own perspectives. So it's always nice to look at someone else's perspective, and you know, if you don't agree with it, that's fine as well. But sometimes we do change our opinions because someone else's opinion might make more sense. Uh, yeah, so I know, you know, a lot of people will not agree with me on this and a lot of people will not agree with the creator. And that is fine, that is the beauty of creation and how we are all different. Dear spirit, bring a gentle touch. This is lovely, and even the energy is gentle. Like how the deer is looking at you, that's beautiful. Dark spirit, ah, here we are. Again with the crown, I guess. Be loyal to what you love. Mm -hmm. This background looks a lot like the mystical shaman oracle. I mean, it's what, it's what drew me to that oracle in the first place, so I obviously love it. And I love how matte the cards are. Because, <laughs> um, you know, as much as glossy cards kind of bring out the colour sometimes, matte cards just feel so good. <laughs> Dolphin spirit, oh, this is amazing. This and that are true. Oh. I'm not sure how the dolphin symbolizes that. Um, maybe because it's both, you know, air breathing and lives in the water. Oh, let's see what they have to say. Dolphin spirit, like her earthly manifestation, is a reminder of duality. Yep, there we go. Right. The duality of life is present when we are suffering, for there is a blessing to in the helpers that appear. Within clouds are silver linings. We need to reflect on what happened in this situation. Right. So 
um, I guess it's kind of like the Chinese yin and yang, uh, kind of meaning where you know light exists within the darkness and darkness exists within the light. Uh, that is a simplistic, reductive kind of interpretation of the yin yang. Uh, but it works here, I guess. This is so beautiful, I can't stop looking at it. Anyway, Dove Spirit. Bee Peace. Oh, I love that. Um, a lot of times we see bee at peace, uh, but this one tells you to be the embodiment of peace itself. So, Bee Peace. Lovely. And of course, it's a white dove. Uh, I've got two rock doves at home, so this is amazing. And I love that it's white because um, doves have the other symbolic meaning of uh, home and belonging. Uh, so that would have changed the energy of the card. So this is amazing. And I like that it's dark in the background. Because a lot of times we have a lot of light and colors in the background, but to me, you know, home is somewhere where you can be safe, where, you know, the darkness at home is a safe place. It's a sanctuary for you to rest, and what better place to rest than in the dark place? So that is lovely. Absolutely lovely. Okay. Dragonfly spirit. Truth transcends illusion. Mm -hmm. Not sure how they justify that as well, but yeah. Ego spirit. Spirit has your back. I guess because the ego lives on a you know mountains and huge rock rocky kind of uh, structures so I guess that's having their backs electric eel spirit oh this is so interesting electric eel bring your ideas to life ah this, you know electricity kind of brings things to life and oh look at that look at this flowy water imagery behind as well as the moon again and all these could be like water plants or algae oh lovely this is such an amazing card kudos to the creator elephant spirit learn from the past I think um, this is because elephants have uh, are renowned for their long-term memories, so that's probably it. Uh, lovely. Flamingo spirit. <laughs> this is interesting because I just came back from um, Norway and Sweden, and the pink flamingos everywhere. Um, I don't know what this symbolism is to them, but it's everywhere. And I got a plush um, of the pink flamingo because it's just so adorable. Embrace the in between. So I guess this the flamingo has because um, it you know it spends half its life in the water. Um, it can walk on land, and I guess as a bird, it symbolizes air as well. So, and colour scheme wise, it could be seen as fiery, so that is lovely. And I love the colour choices, how contrasting it is. Oh. Fox spirit, think on your feet. Ah. So, uh, where I come from uh, in Asia, the fox is always the, the trickster, so it's kind of like the coyote. Uh, except it's not always um, benevolent. Uh, in fact, in China, uh, Japan, and Korea, the fox spirit is always is slightly evil. Well, in Korea, it's completely evil. <laughs> but I mean, those are the ancient myth myths, and 
despite that, in Japan, the fox is still one of a, an important um, god. And there are mountains where, you know, people just worship the fox spirit. And they think um, he is an intermediary between the mountain god and people. So, it's not all bad. <laughs> and, yeah, so, to me, um, the fox spirit would be the trickster rather than the coyote. Uh, but I guess, you know, it's a, it's renowned for its intelligence anyway, so... <laughs> Uh, I like to share this these stories because um, I think it gives perspective on just how different cultures are and yet the same. Um, you could see the similarity between a coyote and a fox, for example, and how they symbolize basically the same thing for two different cultures. Frog spirit. Clear out the clutter. Mm. Lovely card as well. Giraffe spirit. The giraffe seems to be an, um, a personal favourite of Colette Baron Reed, I think, since there were two giraffe cards in the Enchanted Map Oracle. But, see the big picture. Ah, for the vantage of height, of course. This is beautiful. Grasshopper spirit. Young grasshopper. <laughs> Take a leap of faith. Mm. Ah, so this is the full design uh, of that motif. And oh, this is lovely. Look at how it contrasts. Like, it contrasts with the background. It's so lovely. Oh. Um, so, one thing I one gripe I have is um this is grasshoppers have this um wing at the back so this one doesn't so it could be a nymph uh I mean it's not that big a deal but you know if you want to be more ballistic or more true to the animal you would have that you know. groundhog spirit I think this one would have more um significance to Americans than to the rest of us, but time to let go. Uh, time. <laughs> Hawk spirit. Let spirit be your guide. So yeah, this meaning would, um, I would have you um, ascribe this to the crow instead, but I guess the hawk, it sees all, and it's, yeah, still Lovely card. Horse spirit. Ah, freedom is yours. Mm. I love the earth tones here. Hummingbird spirit. Oh, I think there's a hummingbird in the mystical shaman oracle as well. There we are. So this one is vastly different. Um, the hummingbird looks about the same and you know probably based off the same species but it, it just looks so different I love both of them well, another thing you might have noticed is that in the mystical shaman oracle uh, the animals are not adorned with different accessories uh, while the spirit animal spirit one uh, they all have these you know, man-made looking kind of accessories. Uh, they're both lovely. And this one. Be here now. Hmm. Koala spirit. Spirit has a plan. Uh, this koala looks like a guru sitting there cross-legged. Mm. And this looks almost like a halo and you know ah lovely and it even has this staff with um a bell on it huh. so I guess it's the guiding sound that you follow 
so spirit be like ringing it and yeah you can choose to follow it if you want i guess koi spirit koi fish spirit there's always enough I guess in Asian cultures, the koi is a symbol of um, abundance and uh, richness. Affluence, yes, that's what I was thinking of. Affluence, so I guess that's what it means. Lion spirit. Uh, we've gone across continents now. Be generous of spirit. Uh, look at how benevolent the lion looks. And yet it's majestic and we have the same um, background as the um, coyote I think the coyote spirit lovely and I like that the lion doesn't really need a crown it just looks like the king of the savannah as it is uh, that is a nice touch I think lizard spirit oh the lizard has wings so these are the same wings as the chameleon and I guess the chameleon is a lizard as well so this is a generic lizard dream the world into being oh. moth spirit oh so we do have a moth spirit so that is lovely um, a lot of us tend to just stop at butterfly spirits so this is lovely. Look at the tail. <gasps> oh, surrender now. Oh. Mouse spirit. Oh, so cute. Tend to the small things. Ah, this is a lovely message. Absolutely lovely. That's as you. You, if you remember, we have the giraffe and other cards that we keep telling you to look at a big spirit, the big picture, the like spiritual plans. But sometimes we forget and neglect to tend to the small things. So this is great. Ah, and you have that nice chain. Lovely. Nightingale spirit. Love is all around. Oh, look at the flowers. They're like horns. Like trombones. Oh, this is lovely. I mean, I guess we're not um, thinking about the Greek mythology and the tragic, you know, nightingale mythology. Uh, but. You know, love is all around. It's like a Florence Nightingale. You know, the embodiment of loving care. And yeah. Otter spirit. Oh, this is great. You are never alone. So this is great because um, in Singapore, we've just managed to get um, native otter species back. And there are two different families here now. And yeah, they just stick together all the time, and I guess that's I, I can definitely see that you are never alone kind of meaning to it. Oh, they're so cute, like owl spirit. Uh, I would be surprised if the owl was not featured at some point. Uh, this one looks more like a like a winter kind of like snowy owl, kind of. I'm not sure what species there are. Ah, here we go. This is the owl in the mystical shaman oracle. And as you can see again, not adorned, adorned with a crown. You see clearly now. Mm. I guess it's the traditional meaning of um, seeing clearly as in wisdom rather than knowledge. Panther spirit. This card reminds me so much of the um the Jaguar card. Uh yeah, you can probably see why. But different animal anyway. Uh Panther Spirit. Reclaim your power. Oh, lovely. 
carrot spirit. Oh. Watch your words. Uh, yeah. Because I guess, you know, parrots tend to p pick up words and I'm not sure if they actually know the meanings. Um, probably not in a lot of times. So you've got videos of parrots saying all sorts of random stuff. Uh, and I guess it, yeah, telling you that you should watch what you're saying and watch what you're picking up from other people. Uh, in case you you know you say something that you don't quite understand or you don't quite mean, and to have your own voice and stop parroting others. Peacock spirit. Oh, wow! Look at how bright the heart is shining. Um, even though that's um on a bird, that's the neck. So <laughs> that's probably the esophagus, but that's fine. Let it shine, yeah. Still lovely, and I guess it's um, you know, the creator thought it would be heart energy due to the greens. And oh, such great energy though. The pig spirit, ah, one of the most overlooked animals of all time, and it has petal-like wings as well. Use your mind wisely. Ah, uh, um, a lot of people don't know this, but pigs are highly intelligent animals. Uh, and you know stories like Charlotte's Web. Uh, so the pigs are, you know, traditionally quite intelligent, um, despite what people might think. <laughs> so this is lovely that she included this in the deck. Porcupine spirit, time for beginner mind. How do you figure? Let me look that up. When porcupine spirit calls your name, you're being asked to adopt a beginner's mind and to approach situations with innocence and curiosity. Uh, Porcupine asks you to be playful and have a childlike curiosity. There's so much waiting for you that you have yet to discover. I'm not sure how the porcupine symbolizes that, apart from maybe, you know, foraging through the undergrowth. But still, I'll take it. I would think it would have something to do with protection and self-defense, but okay. So cute though. <laughs> Rabbit spirit. Ah, now is a lucky time. Oh look, they're like mini rabbits. And the wings are made of leaves. Oh, lovely. I guess lucky because of the rabbit's foot. It's just a cruel practice. Don't buy rabbit's feet. <laughs> Rhino spirit. Overcome any obstacle. I guess that's the horns where they used to dig through mud and oh wings as well. I think you know one obstacle that I hope the rhino overcomes is extinction. Uh, we've got so many species of rhinos that are disappearing and it's absolutely heartbreaking. So you know do look up um conservation efforts and you know get yourselves educated about it and I think awareness is great and because I am an ecologist in training so <laughs> I feel like it's my duty to highlight the plight of the rhino even though I'm not you know particularly involved in it or at all. <laughs> sandpiper spirit. We've got sandpipers here as well and be playful. Ah that is so adorable. <laughs> Most of the time though, they're in like sandy places rather than like a lush lotus covered pond. But artistic license, I guess. Scarab beetle spirit. Magic works through you. Oh, wow. Wow. This is amazing. 
This is possibly my favorite card so far. Oh man. Seahorse Spirit. Watch and wait. Guess it's alluding to how they cling on to grasses and you know sea grasses. Probably. Yeah. It's so lovely. Skunk Spirit. Know your worth. Ah. I guess, you know, in a lot of times we think the skunks are just stinky and unattractive. But the skunk itself knows its worth and you know it has its role in the in the um ecosystem and honestly the skunks are adorable. <laughs> Snake spirit. Time to heal. Oh. Lovely. Oh, there is a serpent as well in the. Yeah, this one's not really about the snake, so. Yeah. <laughs> Spider spirit. Oh! I take it back. This is now my favorite card. Look at that. Oh my goodness. This is like one of my favorite colors ever. <laughs> Make your dreams real. Uh, weave your web, weave it however you want, and manifest that creativity in your mind. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. Oh, and it's wearing a crown as well. Uh, <laughs> that's a bit odd. Um, and the mandibles look a bit oversized, but okay. <laughs> Squirrel spirit, uh, believe in yourself. Lovely. Also, probably, you know, squirrel away stuff for rainy day or cold weather. Stack spirit, so this is the cover card of the deck. Oh, lovely. This is the card that drew my eyes to the deck in the first place because for the first about six months um, after the deck was announced uh, there was no preview at all of the cards and all I had to go on was this card and like just this card alone made me think that I had to have this deck just absolutely had to have it <laughs> and I haven't been disappointed so far it's oh, gorgeous Take the lead. Ah, uh, lovely. Starfish spirit. Open to infinite possibility. Oh, uh, look, and it has the um. I'm sure these are called the cilia. Uh, I think what it means is star. Um, the sea stars are able to walk in, you know, any direction because of how the water propelled um feet. I'll carry them. So, oh, lovely. Absolutely lovely. And the chakra like design here. Swan spirit. Time for a deep dive. Oh. Turkey spirit. Give with gratitude and grace. This one's a bit questionable. Um, <laughs> I know um, turkeys are how the Americans celebrate Thanksgiving, and I think it's about this time of the year. But still, I'm not sure. You know, getting served on the table is giving with gratitude and grace. But still, it's a nice message. Turtle spirit. Um, Slow and steady wins the race. I think what she means is a tortoise spirit because turtles can swim quite fast. Um, they're actually quite agile in water, so it's not <laughs> it's not really slow. It's steady, but they are steady nonetheless. Voucher spirit. Nothing is wasted. Ah, oh, I love this. It's a bit like the bone collector. The Enchanted Map Oracle. 
uh, except this one, you know, all the dead bodies that and things that we kind of dispose of, um, the voucher manages to find use and nutrients and sustenance from it. So, you know, nothing's wasted. <laughs> Wasp spirit. Sometimes life stinks. Ah, lovely. Again, not a fan of the feathers, but still. <laughs> Whale spirit. Oh, wow. Look at that. Trust the great mystery. Uh, this is amazing. Definitely one of my top favorites for this deck. White raven spirit. Trust in the magic. I guess, um, White animals have special symbolism to certain cultures, uh, especially if they're albino. Um, not this one's not albino because the eyes are black. Yeah, I'm not sure it's a sacred animal. Nonetheless, beautiful. Wolf spirit. Uh, turn knowledge into wisdom. Mm. I don't think it'd be something to do with loyalty and um, teamwork, but okay. And the last one we could pick it up. Wombat Spirit. Be at home. So I love that the animals come from all the continents. You have the European ones, the American ones, and now the Australian ones, I think. This is beautiful. So that's all the cards. Um, I'm going to do like a, a small reading for myself um, as usual. Uh, I'm going to try shuffling it for the first time. Uh, it's just as smooth as the other Playhouse decks with this cardstock. And I think it's been smoother because of how matte it is. It was great. Right, so I'm not going to be able to do a full shuffle as we're approaching an hour. Uh, so let me do a reading. Um, what energy should I be aware of in the coming week ahead? There we go. First card. Chameleon spirit. Act as if. So I'm thinking, um, because I'm sending in applications for jobs. Um, in a way, when we do, uh, you know, job applications, we are kind of acting as someone else. Because as much as we want to be you know, who we are, you know, first impressions do count and do matter, and when we take on a job, we're kind of like getting into role anyway. Second card, cow spirit, the miracles are endless. So, this probably means that I will be finding a job that I want, that I like, hopefully, fingers crossed. The last card, um, Wasp spirit. Sometimes life stings. Ah. So I'll probably be facing some kind of rejection soon. Uh, despite finding something that I really like. So, yeah. Probably what it means. 
but you see what I do like about card decks like this is they have cards like these so it's not all you know life is peachy and great and you know wonderful because if it is people wouldn't be going for readings um, we want advice not you know a pat on the back all the time uh, of course there are decks that do that and I do love them equally uh, but still it's, just thought I'd point out what I love about decks with um, slightly negative meanings because they're more representative of life experience. And one thing that I just noticed um, is how the card backs fit together. Like if you do this, it looks amazing together. Oh. It's little things like this that that just seal the deal. <laughs> so yeah, that's it for today. Um, and that's the spirit animal oracle. Oh no, I might have been saying animal spirit oracle um through half the video, and I apologize. It's a spirit animal oracle, and I think that is an animal spirit oracle. Um, because when I was trying to look it up, um. Google result Google search kept coming up with another deck called the Animal Spirit Oracle. Uh so that was really confusing. Uh, but yeah. So once again I do love this deck so much. Yeah, oh look at the first card. Love it so much. And do you consider getting it if you're into more gentle, dreamlike energies? Uh, I will be covering the Mystical Shaman Oracle at some point. Uh, that deck is, like I've mentioned, slightly more dark. Uh, the energies aren't as, you know, fairy dream... Well, it's still equally dreamlike, but not as fairy kind of bright. Uh, but I do love that deck equally. And you do have cards like that. So I will be talking about this deck in a future video. And oh my god, I've gone past it all. So yeah, that's it for today. Um, wonderful deck again by Miss Colette Baron Reed. Uh, I'm starting to be a fan of hers. Uh, even though I don't really follow, you know, particular authors that much so yeah oh yes and as a final note uh other decks from hay house have come in um, standardized sizes and this one due to it being more magnetic um let me get these out of the way yeah due to it being magnetic um it's slightly bigger than the others uh I know, it's actually slightly smaller. I take it back. Oh, right. It's bigger on the side, but smaller at the top. So if you have a, you know, a shelf full of Hay House decks, uh, it's not going to fit in that well. Uh, and neither is the Mystical Shaman Oracle, simply because it's this big. <laughs> So yeah, that's just one consideration. Uh, you're going to have to set aside another space if you want. You know, if you're a bit particular about how your shelves look. Uh, for me, I keep it in a drawer so it's all fine. <laughs> it's all good. So yeah, that's it for today. And again, this is Singy from the Sanctum of the Soul. And thank you for watching. See ya.